my okay so here we go synthetic <laughs> x equals one it already gave us that from our if we were in factored form if we were in factored form this would lead us here we're already here it's not in factored they gave us straight up what our zero is so we're going to do this again here we go we set up with our coefficients and constants you're going to do even better this time around okay so we have our coefficients and our constant and we bring down our very first coefficient. Three. Diagonally, we multiply. Vertically, we Divide. add. Add. One times three is? Three. three. Negative one plus three is? Two. 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 One times two is? Two. 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 Negative seven plus two is? Negative five. Negative five. One times negative five is? Five. Negative five. And there is the zero we needed. Okay. So with synthetic, what it ends up doing is it gives us, if it's going from a, you're trying to factor out an X, right? So if we start it off as a cubic, then our result is going to be a, no, we took out an X. So we subtracted an X, a, a square, right? So therefore your variables here are going to be, so now you're down to three X squared plus two X minus five. Now, is this something that you can easily factor? Yeah. Okay. So this is now something you can easily factor. And you have a couple ways of factoring this. You can use the quadratic formula. Um, you can use, or you can use the X box, or you can do split grouping. It does not matter which way you choose to do it. Um, but it's, you have three options on how to solve it. If we need to recall X box, basically what X box is saying is you have your A times your B, right? Which is negative 15. I mean, your A times your C is negative 15. Your B is 2. So it multiplies to give you negative 15, but adds to give you 2. What are your magic numbers? Negative five, and, or five, and negative three. 5 and negative 3. So 5 and negative 3 are my, are my middle term. That's what this splits into. So you either can do the box method or you can write it as a grouping. Yes. So you left me when you started writing the group stuff. So these right here are now your coefficients and constant of your quotient. Okay, so but we divided out an X. So instead of starting off as X cubed, we're now going to become X squared. Because when you oh. divide, you're reducing that value, right? Uh, okay, so we use the number that we got the zero from. Yes. And is that the equation? Made it to our, yes, it's our quotient. And so that, that X thing we're now factoring this. So we're manually factoring, well, not manually, but using a method to factor. Uh, so if you were to choose grouping, it's 3X squared, and you're just going to pull minus 3 plus 5X minus 5, and you just do your grouping. Your numbers that work. 5x and negative 3x. Where did you get negative 15 from? So negative when you're doing the factoring with the Xbox, you're multiplying. This is your A times your C term. So we get the... No. So where do we get the A and C from? Um, in, the quadratic, in the quadratic equation, it's AX squared plus BX plus C. So this is your A term, your B term, and your C term. So it'd be, it'd be negative 5 times 3. Negative 5 times 3 makes... Negative 15. Yeah, but how come the 3 right there and the x is a negative? Repeat again. Times negative 3. We're going to be negative 5. Negative 3x. Negative 3x. Oh, I, I, sorry. See? Thank you. No. Yes. What? I get it. No, I don't get it. So my x's come from, I'm, I'm being lazy and not writing everything out, assuming we remember everything. No, I mean like. The, it's on me. That's the negative sign on the 3. Where did that come from? Because five times negative three makes five times negative three, negative fifteen. Negative fifteen. So in order to make these two, when you are factoring, um, I don't know if you did a lot of factoring or not in your previous class, but when you're factoring, your goal is to satisfy two rules, right? The two rules that you need to satisfy is your A term times your B term, but adds to give you your your A term times your C term, but adds to give you your B term. Okay, so you're looking for what magic numbers will give you negative 15x squared, but add to give you positive 2x. And so those magic numbers are 5x and negative 3x. Okay, thank you. You made a question. Thank you for asking.
Okay. I, yes. So when you're, this is the full way of writing the X. I am just, I've always been lazy and not written my X inside the X. Okay. Yeah. So you have the choice to factor this way, or remember we had the box. So when you do X box, you have your three X squared, your negative five, and then we had our negative three X and our positive five X. So either way of factoring is up to you. The greatest common factor here is X. The greatest common factor here is negative one. The greatest common factor here is three X. And the greatest common factor here is five. If it asks for it in the, what are your real zero, your real numbers? So what are your factors? What are your numbers? So when I have this, I can now write F of X in factored form. So F of X equals, if I have X equals one, then I know a factor is X minus one. And my other two factors are X minus one. And yes, I was just writing so you can see each one. And then you would have three X plus five. Do you remember that? So this condenses. So the only time that your GCF will be negative is if the outside box is negative. Yeah. Oh, on the combined to that. Yes, because you gotta you're just creating a new version of two x. So this is your factored form. From here, you can tell me what are your x values. Well, I know x equals one and x equals negative five thirds, right? Okay, I don't want you to write down long division, but I'm gonna quickly do long division. Um, just to recall, because if I'm given the x, what's gonna be the fastest? Uh, you can go from the two x squared to the like. Factor that. That's yeah, you're just factoring whatever method of factoring you want to do. That's why I say you can do grouping, you can do the Xbox, whatever your method of factoring is. Like our, our job in this class is not to teach factoring. So whatever you've learned prior to this, you do. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, just recall why do we do synthetic versus long division? So I'm going to model long division really quick. So with long division. If it says that my x equals one, that means that the factor is x minus one, or agree? So with long division, you set up your division house, and I'm gonna put in three x cubed minus one x squared minus seven x plus five. Um, um. Just like regular division, you're going to divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, okay? So I'm dividing three x cubed divided by x. What is 3x cubed? Yes. No, I'm just modeling it for you. If only if you want to. I'm just modeling it for you. The problem is done. I just said. Okay. All right. So just remembering long division. Hey, guys, please let me know. I'm running on zero level of energy. Zero. What do you want me to do? You want me to shut up so you can do what you're doing? Because that's what I'm getting the vibe of. And I will gladly go do that. Otherwise, I'm I'm pretty sure your peers would like for you to shut up too. All right, so um, reviewing long division, you are dividing, multiply, subtract, bring down. So we divide the first term by the first term. So three X cubed divided by X is three X squared. We're just gonna let my pen be my pen, okay? After you divide, then you're going to multiply. So you multiply the piece of the quotient you got here by each one of these. So three X squared times X is three X cubed. Three X squared times negative one is negative three X squared. Is this ringing any bells? Yeah. yeah. Okay. After you divide, you subtract. When you're subtracting polynomials, that means you are changing the signs and combining like terms, yes? So I change the signs and combine like terms. This cancels out and I'm left with 2x squared. After you divide, multiply, subtract, you then bring down and repeat the process again. So I'm going to divide 2x squared divided by x. What is 2x squared divided by x? 
2x. So I'm going to have positive 2x now becomes part of my quotient. And I'm going to multiply each term of my divisor by that. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. We divide, we multiply, we now subtract. So subtracting means I'm changing the signs and combining. These are going to cancel out. I'm now left with negative 5x. I'm going to bring down. And then I repeat for the last and final time. So I divide negative 5x divided by x. And what is negative 5x divided by x? Negative 5. Now I multiply. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. Subtract means I'm changing the signs and combining. Subtract, subtract, combine, combine, and that is it. So notice that I still ended up with the same thing that I did here. Okay? So synthetic is your shorthand, hence why it's synthetic and not called long. Okay? Yes. So if the term isn't zero, that means that there isn't a perfect square um, and a perfect factor. So you would have a remainder. But for these problems, you would end up having a zero because we're not working with remainders. Okay? All right. So uh, those are the two ways of doing it. Uh, long division works with everything, right? Synthetic only works if it's a linear factor, meaning that it's in the format of mx plus b, right? Um, so it only works with x minus any number, minus any number right? Um, it only works with that, okay? Versus long division works with everything, okay? All right, so that concludes your part one.